hello all how are you welcome to the CFD course uh, you can see here uh, this is our workbench file I have already drawn the geometry for uh, our tutorial today our tutorial today will be concerned about the meshing module only we will work with two different geometries one of them is external flow like flow over a flat plate and one is an internal flow flow inside an annular elbow okay let's start with a simple one which is the flow over flat plate it's an external flow I have already drawn the geometry it's just very simple you know that if you have a plate like this as you can see the plate at the bottom here we have uh, a flow moving with a velocity u naught for example we will have something like a boundary layer formed over this plate when drawing the geometry of, of the domain that we are concerned about and we will solve inside CFX or fluent take care that we draw the fluid domain not the solid domain we are concerned about the fluid so we will draw the domain of the fluid which is above the plate so actually I have already drawn this part it's just very simple it's like a rectangle and then I build it with a small thickness take care from this point that you have if you are going to work with fluent you can work with a surface so you don't need to pull the surface to make a 3d model if you are going to use CFX you cannot work with a surface working with a 2d models is not available inside uh, CFX but for fluent you can work with a surface so for us here we will work with a 3d model it can be used inside fluent or CFX without problems but this is an important point to mention that working with CFX must be a 3D model although you can work with a surface but when going to work with a, with a domain like this which we can solve in 2D in Fluent when you go to CFX it will be 3D with a small thickness this small thickness must satisfy that it has at least about 4 or 5 elements inside this region inside this direction or inside the pulling direction if you have just only one element the results will not be accurate this is not our part uh, right now but uh, you just mention this uh, from now in order to understand that if you are going to use CFX you must draw a 3d mod okay let's uh, start with uh, our meshing here when you open the meshing module as you can see here uh, you have this outlines and then the details of what you have selected from above here you will see at the bottom cor left corner here you have the display viewer uh, at the right part here you can of course this uh, this window you can zoom in zoom out you can select uh, a specific surface or a specific body or an edge or a, a vertex you can everything here in the viewer section typically is uh, like in site CFX uh, it will be a uh, copy of it okay and let's continue here inside here we have file you can save the project to our archive you can create gener generated data you can export your uh, your meshing to in order to use it inside any uh, ANSYS workbench or using any other solvers you can add in options and multiple things here inside the file but inside the home tab here you have the outlines you can find or search for something you can select here the tree you can expand all of the uh, the present parts inside the tree you can generate the mesh uh, here inside the insert section we can insert an image or export an image from the, this viewer we can set a section plane in order to check the meshing inside the geometry or inside the domain after doing the mesh we can add any annotations we can add a comments we can name a selection for a surface and this is a very important part that we will mention at the end of this video you can select the units that you prefer it's metric it's millimeter kilogram newton whatever you can change it from here or from the bottom here you can select uh, the preferred units and other things for the tools like the worksheet key animation frame keyframe animation some tags or show errors or not manage views unit converter and multiple things here for the tools we have also if you work uh, you want to work with a full screen you can manage if any of these uh, 
parts at the left corner is missing like the graphics toolbar uh, or any of the, the details here is not showing you can show it here from the manage tool you can add the user defined reset the layout uh, this user defined is for the layout to be as you can see this corner is for the outline this for the details and this is for the viewer you can set your own preferred part for the meshing actually all of this tab is can be reached just by left right click on the meshing you can insert you can update everything inserted in this tab is just by right clicking on mesh so i always use right click here you can change the display with any orientation isometric or trimetric you can change the views you can rotate around the specific axis zoom in zoom out everything concerning the view can be changed from this display section for the selection you can of course select a specific domain to work with uh, for your meshing you can add named selections as we will mention at the end automation part here this one is just for running a macro file or uh, recording the meshing if you want to record everything that you are going to do inside the meshing right now so ri just right click and select start recording start recording this will record every order that you put inside the meshing after that you can run the macro and uh, try to check it for any other uh, geome other geometry similar to this one but with different size for example so meshing here you can also start recording like inside the workbench itself okay this is just uh, an overview about the, the interface of the meshing let's start our meshing itself the meshing is just to discretize the domain into a very small parts uh, these elements or these parts is as you make it smaller the the results will be much better and it will be more accurate because as we mentioned in the first video of this course that we cannot solve the, the partial differential equations directly so we discretize the domain to a very small elements and then we solve it as a linear equations okay from the beginning here when you open the mesh when you go to the meshing part you will see that the details of the mesh it uses the geometry settings you can use uh, other display settings like the element quality aspect ratio but we always use the geometry setting to display the our model for the physics reference here we are going to solve fluid flow so it's a cfd not mechanical and for the solver preference if you're going to solve for fluent you will select this if you are going to solve using cfx you will, you, you will select cfx here from the solver preference okay uh, element order by default it's linear you can change it from linear to program contoured or quadratic we always work with linear uh, the element size this one is by default a very large element size this one if you just click on the mesh and generate mesh or right click and update or generate the mesh you will see that your meshing is actually very coarse this meshing is very poor and your results will not be accurate at all so we always change this element size to a very to a smaller value this one by default is five millimeters if we change this to like three millimeters you will see that the number of elements is increased and the element size is smaller if we change this like for one millimeter this one will be a finer grid which is better for our solution you can see here when we select the element size to be one millimeter the number of elements in the pulling or the extruding of this domain is right now about four elements which is enough for solving accurately using cfx if you used like three millimeters you will see that there is only one element in the pulling in the bowling direction or in the z direction you will see that it's just one element this one element is not sufficient for solving inside cfx your solution will not be accurate and the heat transfer or fluid flow will not be uh, transported uh, correctly from one element to another so i always prefer that you use sufficient uh, thickness here like for four millimeters or five but at the end you will check this by changing the mesh element size to have a number of elements on this direction like four or five elements this one will uh, guarantee you that you have uh, a, an accurate results at the end 
and also you can add this uh, like a parameter at the end and check if it's changing the number of elements to be instead of five elements in the z direction to be six what is the effect of this part okay so let's continue this is just the, the general meshing it's it will be applied for all of your domain so the domain here will be discretized with an element size of three millimeters after that inside the details of the mesh you can see here that we have something called sizing inside the sizing there is something called adapt use adaptive sizing here it's selected to be no you can select it to be yes this adaptive sizing is just in order to move around the geometry with the curvature and everything inside the mesh but actually for us this meshing is just very simple it's uh, like a cuboid so everything here as you can see is just uh, some edges not having any curvature so this adaptive mesh isn't uh, isn't effective in a case like this but for the elbow in the next uh, uh, one that we are going to work with using adaptive sizing will affect the results greatly okay so let's re return back here if you select no for the adaptive sizing you will see that you have two main things called capture curvature and capture proximity these parts in order to understand these parts we have here an image without curvature and the proximity for something like this you will see that your meshing will be so, like this one when using the curvature you will see that this curvature here has much more elements when using the curvature only while using the proximity the number of elements are increased in the uh, any part that is of a small thickness like this uh, small gap but when using curvature and the proximity together the number of elements is increased in every uh, parts for the curvature and also for any small parts you can see the difference here between without curvature and the proximity the element size is large when using curvature at each curvature you can see that the number of elements is increased at this corner for example at this curvature but when using the proximity the number of elements are increased for a small parts or uh, a narrow parts like this but for the curvature it is not changing using curvature and the proximity is always the best way you can see here that the curvature here added a lot of elements for the curvature in order to capture what happens inside this curvature and also for the narrow parts or small parts like this also the number of elements are increased so this is just for the curvature and the proximity you can apply them but actually for our case there is no curvature to add uh, so everything is sharp corners okay uh, after that for the quality here you can see that you can check the quality with errors so it will show you the errors uh, the message pane here you can see if there is errors while doing the mesh you can set a target screeners or uh, when a, a, an element uh, the elements inside your mesh is skewed or uh, is distorted with a very small angle this will affect your solution so we always target this value for the, the screeners to be as much as possible small the default value is to be 0.9 if it's smaller than this this will be better so a value of 0.8 is better than 0.9 for the smoothing for the smoothing we can make it very high smoothing for the mesh matrix this one is a very important part in order to check your mesh if we generate the mesh right now in order to update our mesh this is our mesh right now if we go here for the mesh metrics this one is in order to check the statistics of your mesh is the mesh is compatible uh, with our needs or target our uh, what we need for our mesh like for the element quality the aspect ratio for the part that we mentioned this one if there is element skewed or the screenness is very high it will be a bad thing but actually for our very simple domain like this all of the elements are uh, hexagonal or uh, everything is here is uh, the elements are cuboid so you can see here that the value is very very small it's times 10 bar negative 10 so 
you don't care about the skinness in 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 uh, a domain like this but for the elbow we will check this together okay also at the right part here you can see the mesh matrix it says that for a value of the element uh, the number of elements for each value of the skinness for example here if we change the mesh matrix to the aspect ratio the aspect ratio here for all of these elements is the longest uh, dimension divided by the shortest dimension of this element you can see that almost all of them has a value of 1.435 so actually the aspect ratio here is is perfect the aspect ratio is preferred to be like from 7 to 11 something like this if it exceeds 11 like if you have an as very high aspect ratio like 50 or whatever or something that is very high this will affect your solution at the end so take care about the aspect ratio to be as much as possible from about 7 to 11 is the best value uh, and also if it's small like this this is not a, a big deal for our uh, for our solution the solution is affected if the aspect ratio is very high but if it's small if it reached one uh, so the longest and the shortest uh, dimensions of your element is equal in size this will be perfect but in many cases if the domain is has a, having some curvature this is very hard to be reached okay so you can also check the element quality from its name element quality is better to be higher as much as possible near to one as you can see almost all of the elements are 0.92 you can also check you have different mesh metrics that you can check for it you can check for the orthogonality and many things here is that you can check for the mesh which is mo more advanced that we can talk about it later after that there is something called inflation i don't prefer to work with inflation from this part we will add inflation by our own by right clicking and insert the inflation because actually this mesh is for the whole domain without selecting a specific uh, part you can you can have a fluid domain and a solid domain working with the mesh like this you will apply the inflation for everything inside the geometry but we don't need this so we will add the inflation later for the advanced section here you can select the number of cpus that can that will be used inside the mesh it's programmed controlled but if you want to uh, finish the mesh as faster as possible you can increase the number of cpus that are going to be used inside your mesh if you used only one of your cpus this will be slow for me i have four uh, cpus so this will be uh, sufficient for to to fire to, to reach uh, uh, the meshing in uh, as mu as fast as possible okay and after that you can check for uh, the statistics here the number of elements or the number of nodes everything here inside the mesh you can just press on this uh, this box beside the nodes or beside the elements this is called a parameter so when you check for this box you will see a blue b here inside this box this means that this became a parameter so if we return back to our ansys workbench you will see that there is a parameter set going to the parameter set you will see that there is output parameter from the meshing called the mesh nodes and its value is 544 so instead of opening the meshing module in order to know what is the number of nodes or what is the number of elements or if you want to if you prefer to check the element size from outside uh, inside the ansys workbench you can just edit it here so you will see that there is an input parameter right now called mesh element size it's three millimeter you can change its value or its unit and then update the mesh so using the parameters is always preferred if you are going to check the change of a, of a value for any of your inputs inside the mesh or inside the setup and then check it regularly by changing it with different value okay so this is just for the general tab here inside the mesh but in many times we need to add or insert as something inside this tree inside the mesh you can add a method what is the method here the method is just to specify the type of the mesh that you are going to do inside your domain 
at the beginning here it will ask you about scoping method how can you select the geometry here we select uh, by default it's geometry selection so when we select this it will be selected here when we apply but you can change this to named selection named selection means that you have named something previously and you want to select it instead of selecting it inside the viewer you will select it from the names that will appear right now here but we don't have anything so it's just none if we return back to the geometry selection we can select our body here from the methods that we have selected it's by default of course not suppressed it will be activated for the method you can change it by default it's automatic you can specify a type of mesh like a hex dominant so every thing inside your domain will be hexagonal or to be tetrahedrons or you can select it to be sweep or multi-zone or cartesian or layered tetrahedrons so you have different options here that you push or uh, make a limitation for the mesh to be of a specific type like for hex dominant if we generate this one you can see here it's just hexagonals which is by default is the one that uh, will be generated without selecting this if we select tetrahedrons you can see here when we update the mesh the meshing elements is now changed instead of being hexagonal it's so having triangles it's called tetrahedrons in the 3d dimensions okay so here you select the type of the mesh that you are going to use inside your domain I always prefer to use the hexagonal because this hexagonal type is always preferred because the, there is no squeeness or the elements are not ske skewed inside your domain. If we return back here and check for the quality of the mesh, you can see here that the squeeze or sugonality is now changed instead of being very high of 1, here it's from 0 0.2 to 0 0.97. If we change this to check for element this uh, here for the squeeness you can see here that it reached 0.79 we mentioned that it is better to be as low as possible for the hexa hexagonal type it was almost times 10 bar negative 10 here it's 0.79 i mentioned that it is preferred that to be as low as possible but 0.9 or below 0.9 is sufficient for your domain to solve with accurate results but if it's very small like t times 10 bar negative 10 it will be of course perfect so if we return back here and remove this one we don't need to be having tetrahedron we can select here instead of using a method we can select a sizing here we select a specific sizing for the geometry that we are going to work with like for example if we select the whole geometry here by selecting the body so this sizing will be named body sizing so you are going to do a body sizing uh, um, and the size of the elements inside this body will be mentioned inside this section but if we return back here and then instead of selecting a body we can select just a face if you select inside the viewer here a face and select just this face so th now it will be changed from body sizing to face sizing so right now you are forcing the mesh to have a specific face sizing of the one that you are going to work with right now. Also you have the option to select a sizing for an edge not just a face. If you select here an edge you can select this edge for example. So it will be edge sizing. Selecting an edge sizing as you can see here it's just very clear that when selecting edge sizing you have this one is the distance between the elements that you will have inside this edge so inside the sizing you have the options to select an edge sizing face sizing and also body sizing if you are going to use one domain like this selecting the mesh and the, and the element size to be of three millimeters this means that the body sizing for the whole domain will be three millimeters but if you come inside this tree and select as the whole body to be have a body sizing of like for example here if it's a body sizing and it's, instead of three millimeters if we select it to be like one millimeter here if we update the mesh you will see that it will be forced for the domain to have an element size of one millimeter so anything below the mesh inside this tree will be forced before the mesh part so 
everything mentioned inside uh, this tree will be applied for your mesh but if something is not mentioned or not clear for the program if for example you have two domains or three domains and you have selected just one domain to have a body sizing of one millimeter this means that this body will be meshed with one millimeter but the other two bodies will be meshed with three millimeters so take care of this part that this uh, options that you are applying right now is just for the bodies or the domains that you are not going to do any further details inside its meshing if you right click here inside the mesh we have contact sizing if you have two domains in contact you can select a sizing for this contact or this interface you can add a refinement adding a refinement i don't prefer to add this one because it affects the quality of the mesh greatly but at some times you need to add a refinement or increase the number of elements or decrease the element size at a specific region around a wall or something like this but i brief i always prefer and i always recommend using inflation instead of refinement inflation is better because the inflation layers here doesn't affect the element quality by a bad behavior like the refinement refinement always uh, when you check the re after adding refinement you will see that the meshing quality is reduced for the aspect ratio for the screeners and for different uh, mesh metrics will be reduced but for the inflation just the aspect ratio will be increased a little bit but for the other parts it will be almost fine so what is the inflation actually if we turn back to the picture of the flow over flat plate we know that there is a boundary layer over this plate this boundary layer have all of the changes inside the velocity from zero up to the free stream velocity of u naught. So you know that there is a lot of a change inside this boundary layer. So every element near to this wall must be as much as possible small. Because if you put a large element size near to the wall, you will not capture what happens at this part this part here where the velocity changes from zero to u infinity or the free stream velocity this part is very critical and we want to increase our number of elements inside this section so adding inflation we will select the geometry take care that at the beginning you will select the geometry or the domain the body itself so here we will select the domain or the body after that for the definition we will define the boundary that we are concerned about the blade that we are going to work with is at the bottom part here so i will select a face and then select the bottom part here which is the, the flat blade selecting this means that we will do an inflation inside this uh, for for this blade the inflation means add multiple layers over this plate to capture the boundary layer when you go here in the insert you will see inside the inflation apply inflation to specific boundaries so it always applies for a specific boundary if we generate here our mesh the new mesh here after adding the inflation we can close this mesh matrix and then check for our meshing you can see right now this is the new the inflation layers that we have but this one don't we don't have here um, a clear view for the boundary layer the element size is relatively high because we haven't changed this part you can select a total thickness you can select a specific first layer thickness or a smooth transition first aspect ratio or last aspect ratio i always work with total thickness for example the number of layers is the number of layers that you prefer to add inside this inflation for example we need to add like 10 layers of this uh, inflation and the gross rate is the rate of increasing the the element size inside the inflation itself the maximum thickness is the total thickness of this inflation so for example we will add 10 layers here over this plate this 10 layers of total thickness like for example 2 millimeters so if we distributed it equally it will be 2 divided by 10 so it will be 0 0.2 0 0.2 millimeter is the thickness of this element but actually this is for gross rate 1 not 1.2 for 1.2 you will see that there is an increase in the element size gradually till reaching the, the entire domain so if we update this mesh 
updating the mesh right now with the inflation you can see here that you have added if we zoomed in for this part you can see clearly that we have 10 elements added here the the, the total thickness from the last element of inflation to the first element this total thickness is of two millimeters it is of two millimeters and the number of them is 10 layers we have a gross rate of 1.2 means that the first element is smaller than the, the preceding one the next one and then uh, so on it will be increased with a gross rate of 1.2 if we set this to be just one you will see that all of the element will have the same size so each one of them will be of 0.2 millimeter from the plate till reaching the entire domain the interior uh, elements you can see here it is now equally sized but we always work with a gross rate of like 1.2 why we always work with this because if we return back here you can see that the change is very high near very near to the wall and then the change is gradually decreased until being almost the same outside this boundary layer so if we return back to the mesh we always work with something like this the inflation layers must be very small near to the wall and then increase gradually to be like a smooth transition from a small element near to the wall to be a large element outside uh, to the interior of this domain okay so this is a very important part to mention for the inflation you have face meshing if you want to select a specific mesh for your face you can copy your mesh to another domain you can match control matching control is just from its name it matches the mesh from one surface to another so if you do for example uh, an element sizing for the edges in one of the faces and you want to, this to be copied to the other part which will be periodic or symmetry so you will use a match control you can use a bench or the inflation that we have mentioned you can this other features is just very advanced i haven't used them but in case you want to edit your mesh manually you can set a specific numbering for the mesh you can merge two of the nodes into one node you can move one of the nodes you can group uh, some of the nodes to be have a specific name and there is a contact mesh in a match in case of having two domains and also group for the, for them okay now we have mentioned most of the outlines here for the meshing section i just want to check with you the last part that i have mentioned about the name selection for the name selection when you select one of the faces like this one we know that at the bottom we have the plate so i have selected this and when right clicking or select create uh, named selection you can create a named selection from this part creating named selection here means that you will name the selected geometry which is just this face and the name of this selection you can name it as you want like uh, you can name it blade naming this to be blade you have here a named selection which named to be blade now when you enter cfx or fluent you will have a better understanding of your uh, imported mesh because when you work with the mesh without using the named selection when you open fluent or cfx you will see that they are numbered by uh, a random values for for the names like you will see that this face instead of being a blade you will see this to be like uh, f101 or f102 whatever it names it named it randomly by any number so it will be like a nightmare if you have a large domain with different surfaces in order to select a specific surface it will be very hard to select it without knowing that this is the one that you want to select so named selection is pre always preferred to be done before entering the setup section also inside the, the the meshing itself from the inflation we can select instead of geometry selection we can select a named selection so right now we have a boundary called the blade so we can select the mesh to be done for the blade and instead of selecting it from the viewer we can select now by name selection we have the whole domain you can name the whole domain to be like 
air for if the fluid is air so the name selection is not just for faces you can name it for the whole body after selecting a surface or a body and name it with a specific name that you prefer you can return back and check if your selection is correct and everything is fine okay so updating just the mesh now it's updating the whole mesh of uh, our domain and then we can see the, the selected uh, named selection for the plate here we have the plate at the bottom it, it's colored with red at the bottom and we have the air the whole domain okay also uh, we can add a, a, a section plane so we can just make a section inside our domain like if you have something like this you can see the meshing inside the domain itself because we cut the domain into two parts like this you can here from the, the section plane you can see the the cutted elements in 3d so here you can see the elements like this okay thanks for watching for this video i will continue the next part with the internal flow of an annular elbow we will check it with some advanced features inside the meshing module uh, see you again in the next week uh, don't forget to like and comment and share if you like this video thanks for watching